Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the PCS for 2022 spring. My name is Asterix, and I'm joined by the fantastic Clement Chu. Now, to get things started, I want to let you know we're sponsored by CDBC Bank and Calibre. And before we kick things off, Riot Games, Carry Live Co. and Garena, thank you so much for the league operation and the full production. I want one of those cards, CDBC Bank. I want one of the cards. And as we get into, you know, our next matchup, Clement, let's kind of just set the record straight. PSG Talon. Now sitting on top of the league at 9-1, and one. they're on a 9-win streak. While they still have the first deep cross gaming, it is pretty fair to say that right now, they're looking like at least a top two team, if not the best team in the league. Yeah, I have to say their coaching edge is so massive here. Uh, once again, Corgi won Worlds with EDG, so he's pretty much like a high school bully in a kindergarten playground. So yeah. <laughs> he gets to shove people around wherever they go. It, it just... I, I have talked about this a lot, but I, I think if you have a squad of players that all have a somewhat above average level of play skill and you're able to have a wide champion pool, then it's really a coach's dream. You can go any direction that you want. I still haven't really seen like strong tempo comps from the side of PSG, but hey, I, they could definitely be coming. And on the other side, though, you know, we are just kind of cementing this because I think it's an important point for the league itself, mm. especially since we are... I said before we were in week six. We're in week four, but mm. week six is the end of the league, so we're a couple of weeks away. Mm. We are looking down the complete other end of the standings. Sem9 versus Hurricane Gaming. And today, Clement, uh, with Sem9, as they look for their first win in the league, they are bringing in uh, Kirino, who is their mid laner. And remember, we've seen Lazar the whole time, the uh -huh. first time he's jumping on the rift. Yeah, this is super exciting. We have seen Kirino back in the LST, was playing with Axis Empire. And this is a guy that loves his burst damage. He has his Akali games, he has his Zed games. So yeah. I, I think this is, it's really going to augment the play style that we have seen from Sen9, which is live young or die early. Basically, they <laughs> love to trap these full-on 15-minute tempo, uh, full physical damage compositions. Yeah. They're a treat to watch. They haven't been able to make it work so far. But against Hurricane Gaming, there's definitely a chance. There is, because Hurricane Gaming, the other team, sitting 1-9 and nine in the league. Uh, Hurricane Gaming, their only win of the split so far was against Sem9, funnily mm -hmm. enough. They've gone through the full rotation of the rest of the league, haven't picked up a win. And I, I think what we've kind of understood about this team is that, like, they have a very gifted top laner. Mm -hmm. And every single time they play, I bring it up, because I've seen ICU on the Gwen looking exceptional and it was a sem 9 match that i cast uh but clement you know there are other parts of this team that are developing it just feels like it's very outweighed with the rest of the experience in the league yeah it definitely is and currently hurricane gaming actually have the worst early game out of the 10 teams in the pcs yep. that's why i think that sem 9 strategy of just try to rush you down with these crazy assassin skirmish comps might work against hurricane gaming and for Hurricane Gaming, their best composition, by my estimation, is likely the Poke Comp. We have seen okay. Bang 2 play a mean Ezreal, and one of ICU's best champions is the Jace. I think it's a composition that requires far less coordination than trying to engage or trying to play Silent Split Push. So I do expect uh, both of these teams to just go what with what they're best with. Likely uh, Assassin Comp coming in from uh, one side and uh, Poke from ICU. Okay, well, different comms at the very least going to get me excited. We're looking at a comparison between the top laners here. Uh, Shiromine versus ICU. Now, th these stats aren't going to be impressive, but what we can tell is that for Hurricane Gaming, their top laner does put in work despite... Mm. Was it you and me talking about this, Clement, where ICU doesn't actually get that much attention in comparison to how, how for the lane and priority he's kind of set up? His job is to 1v2, win the lane, and then carry the team to victory. Yes. If that sounds difficult, well, it actually it is, is pretty difficult. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I feel for this guy. 
this has been my highlight for Hurricane Gaming is just watching ICU struggle through Purgatory. He's yep. like, uh, what am I doing? And you can tell that he's frustrated. Like sometimes we've seen him after a game, like he just he just goes in and kills the enemy, the AD carry, uh, uh, amidst the entire enemy team. And he's happy with that. Yes, he knows he's just going to lose the game right afterwards, but hey, at least he got something for the team. So that's kind of the situation with ICU. I think when, let's be honest, I feel like the laning strength from both of these teams are going to be a little bit lower and there will be less pressure across the board. Maybe we will be able to see Alio give him more support. And that's what I have been calling for with, for the entire split. I know Alio is, you know, connecting from... Uh, from Shanghai, so he does have better sort of synergy with uh, 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 with the mid laner here. But I really uh, wish that ICU could get a little bit more help. Yeah, and and again, like through the draft, maybe we'll see, uh, maybe we'll see something that builds for the setup of that lane. At the very least, if we're talking about picks as we move into draft itself, I want to see ICU given over the Gwen. Uh, it's something he's had a couple of times, but in the PCS, always banned away. And there we go. Sem9 have done their homework. Actually targeting quite a bit here. Uh, Ezreal against Bang 2. The mm -hmm. rise against Cha Cha 2. So it feels like Sem9 have made sure there's no comfort coming through at the very start. These are really smart bands, I have to say. Uh, Bang 2 is probably the only AD carry we've seen to just completely forego the Jinx and Aphelios and go yeah. for Ezreal. So straight bands, and it does take away a huge part of Hurricane Gaming's identity. This is a team that only has one win, and uh, you know that one win was kind of a kind of the bow composition. So we're not really sure what else is going to be successful for them. Okay. Interestingly enough, on the red side, we're seeing a very early Graves. I do want to mention that Alio is one of the few junglers that actually also plays Graves, so it could be a flex pick. Yep. And I, I do like this kind of switching up strategy, though I don't like Graves as a jungler at all. <laughs> I know you don't. It's okay. It's uh. Kind of interesting, uh, you're looking at the potential of Graves here and one of the few junglers that play it. You also play a bit of Gwen jungle in the PCS, mm. which in LPL we don't even touch. So again, there's those differences that makes me excited to, to come here and cast. And especially, you know, even watch teams like Sem9 and Hurricane Gaming. With the drafts you've already highlighted, Sem9, they want to build on a bloody comp. Mm. Well, Nidalee would put priority in, but remember, we still don't have a solo lane setup. For sure, Amina and Kirino that could benefit from this for, for now. All right, yeah, change. at least going for, um, I, I think Diana is still a, are one of our highest win rate junglers, and yep. it's very clear that what you can do with this comp it's a one bowl combo, go all in type of composition. Feels like ICU is not impressed so far with the draft. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, that's, yeah. that's not a good sign. Yeah, we'll see what he does. Hurricane Gaming right now, they are building themselves into a little bit of a hole. Only, like, full physical damage right now coming out from them. Most like an mm -hmm. AD jungler here. So, they might be forced to consider what they have as an AP option for the top lane. And right now, there really aren't that many AP tops. This is a little bit worrying to see how they will run with their composition. Or maybe Hurricane Gaming this game are going to take the Sem9 strategy and try to live fast or die young. Okay, well that would be exciting to see is they're making sure Sem9 can't do that with the Diana locked in. Uh, oh, by the way, when you talked about Diana being great in, in, in the region, 8-2 and two at the moment. Ooh. So sitting at an 80% win rate uh, with a pretty strong KDA across the board. Uh, Hana and Kongyue, the biggest abusers of it right now, but I noticed you guys get a band against you. So Hurricane Gaming want to get rid of some of the partnerships that work so well with it, mm -hmm. while for Sem9, some of those AP options you're talking about against Chacha, I like the Vega ban especially since we've seen that pulled out from him before. Yeah, the idea is very simple here from Sem9. You just want to make sure they don't get uh, snowball potential. We have seen sort of a tempo Vigar with the, the Predator as a keystone. So I like the bans here. Hurricane Gaming, they still get a Syndra. Uh, but this composition is very much trending towards the early game. And I'm a little bit curious if that strategy is going to work out. Now, I will say, if the Hurricane Gaming does have statistically the worst early game, it's not by much. Um, they're right. a negative 4,500 gold on Hurricane Gaming side and negative 3,700 gold um, on Sem9 side at 50. Oh my god. Clement, we get a Z mid. Oh, let's go, Kirito. Good. This is what I wanted to see this guy for. First game of the of the PCS, uh, like this split, and he's like, ah, you know what? It's been years. 
and he needs to make an impact. So I love this. You talk about Sem 9's drafting coming through. The 0 and 10 team flourishing with a Z. Uh, I need to wait the five seconds because they're throwing me through a loop. That looks a bit more standard. Mm. So Shiromine goes to something a bit more normal. Now we're going to find out from Hurricane Gaming who's going in the jungle. Don't give I see you, Dark nah. Clement. I don't want to see him on no. Dark. Nah. <laughs> Why the no? I, I'm Good a little favorite. bit disappointed with this Dark, to be completely honest. I, I feel like they had a comp that is just like all fast forward, all early game potential. We have to smash things, we have to win, we have to play tempo. And then there's this NAR that I don't know what NAR does in this comp. I honestly don't. Like, okay. It, he's so situational in terms of his engage that he can't really yep. sync up with the Jin or the Syndra. And it, it's, it, it doesn't fit with the theme of just going forward. You know, it's, it's, it's much yeah. more conservative pick. I mean, as well, like, you poke play at range as well, right? Um, I guess if I'm trying to see it, building the space. But again, it's always situational with an R. Uh, so in this game, Clement, you know, a lot of questions for Hurricane Gaming. I will say, having a Z with Diana, although there's not much CC between the duo, like, there's a lot of burst potential, mixed damage. On top of a Syndra, Scatter the Week can only most of the time hit one. So... I don't know, for 7-9, I'm kind of tossing it up, that it's, it's it's given me a bit. I think there's a lot of targets for this Zed to go for. That's the True. great thing about this Zed pick. It's uh, Sure, we haven't seen Zed a lot because, honestly, with stopwatches, with exhaust, it, it, it's a champion with a very, very short window of being successful. You need to get a kill, you need to get Stillball before the stopwatches come online. And, and then the exhaust just completely ruins your day. Uh, so far, these assassins have not been working out uh, very much at all. But when you there's a Graves, there's a Jin and a Syndra all sitting around, hey, that's three targets out of five that you can potentially just kill outright. Kirino's opening game into the PCS. Been a while since we've seen him over in the LST. Uh, but remember, regions combined, mm -hmm. but still... It's been a while. Uh, three years, I think, Clement. Since 2019, since he's last been, uh, played a competitive game on stage. Yeah, it has been. We haven't seen him since uh, sort of like the start of the PCS, uh, basically. Yep. So that's been the thing with Sem9. They had a bit of a hiatus. Unfortunately, no Malaysian teams um, for a while as the regions combined. But now they get their chance again. I just can't Same. wait to see this. Uh, we, we did get a look at the uh, runes here, and uh, pretty did. much standard. We did see a little bit of uh, Taste of Blood coming in from the Zed, just to get a little bit more lane sustain. And of course, he is going to be running the Electrocute, as is Cha-Cha. Yeah, so, you know, very aggressive lane. I love, you know, the Ignite coming through from Kirino, as Hurricane Gaming are going to start this invade. Ward over the other side will spot it, but as they move from Pixel Brush already, there we go. Ward's there. And it will be 10 gold given, given over to N. Hal. Uh, Hurricane Gaming still going in for this, though, Clement. They want to start on the bottom side of the map, and it looks like set Al Liao up for the potential of a vertical jungle. I think it could be more than vertical. He could go red buff to red buff. This is perfectly fine for him because okay. there will be no contest uh, from someone like a Diana. And uh, I like this level one strategy here. The, the path here is a little bit questionable, let's it be is. honest. Uh, it is, know. and how he's uh, already used stretch lines to flash out. ignite. No. You know what? Regret immediately ignite <laughs> goes down. Clement, uh, uh, that's no longer worth. Belia running up to uh, Alial, but it's a lethal <laughs> tempo jinx with Leona having Q, and he can't fix that. Uh, I feel like there was a question mark sign before the profit point uh, coming yeah. on the side for Hurricane Game. It's like, all right, we're going to go red buff to red buff, <laughs> and then we're going to dominate this Diana. She's never going to get level six. Uh, and that was just uh, that was just a completely unnecessary error. Like, if you committed to that play and the enemy team's already shut the wave that way, you got to take a safer route. There's just... I think they actually, they, they probably went with the invade a little bit too late, as we saw um, Clay X and Philia were able to shove the wave quite convincingly early on. Oh, Kirino, look at it. Ooh. Let's go. Zed melee range, but the problem is that you've already used the shuriken. And so Cha Cha just builds off and spaces it out, and Kirino loses the trade. But hey, coming back to it, uh, there's a 1k gold lead for Sem9 in the early game. 
And for a team that wants to play aggressive, what a grand start as Caspiel's even coming to the bottom side. Zenith played and how ignoring it with the dredge line. And that means Caspiel can't come in. So small win for Hurricane Gaming's bottom line. A good response coming in from uh, and how, uh, but throughout all of this, I do want to mention because Alio had to show up in the lane in the bottom side. Yeah. Uh, this jungling path, he will catch up with the farm and he will actually exceed uh, the farm from Diana, but at the moment, he's still a little bit struggling to catch up. So this level one invade is, uh, I'll be honest, completely nullified. There's just, it's not been doing so much. This is a tough fight for uh, for Caspio. I don't think he should be here uh, and it's not going to be in time. Especially with ICU having the push up on the top side. We haven't talked much about the lanes because of what we've seen as they've played once again, but Enhal has a pretty good read on how to redirect it. The dredge line cancels it out and, and camera getting baited by that one a little bit again. Uh, as I was saying, Clement, we haven't talked much about the lanes. Mid lane looks pretty fun at the moment as Electric comes Ooh. forward again, this time Kirino winning out the trade. CS differential by quite a bit though from Cha Cha, so uh, worth noting here that the lanes are going pretty well with Hurricane Gaming in a similar position up in the top side with ICU zoning out Shiromine. And another big thing to point out is just looking at the map, we have far superior vision on the side of Sem9. They do have deep wards into the jungle. They know whenever Alio is going to try to gank the mid lane, which is really necessary when you're playing a Ignite versus Teleport matchup. A lot of times you're going to have to be walking into the wave in this type of a situation where the wave is very close to the enemy tower. So I, I like what they've been doing right here from Sem9, and they're really just setting up for a big skirmish onto the bot side. I think that is probably the best target to go for. No flash on N How, and uh, from what we've seen, good shoving potential from Zed. Also coming in with a big power spike with the serrated Dirk. So I do expect yeah. them to kind of shift their pieces towards the bottom. One on uh, Aliao as well, just noting that. Serrated Dirk mm. picked up. We've got a blasting one here for Caspiel, and we're getting close to the six point. Caspiel actually with an EXP lead for now, but uh, enemy jungler on the other side. Going to be picking up the Gromp, and that'll get him close. Objective now up to with the Dragon, and both junglers heading towards bot with Sem9 having the shove in. And I feel like it is early game, Clement. You know, you and I haven't talked too much about comps because we have been sidetracked. Uh, you did say in draft that for Hurricane Gaming, the pieces didn't fit. I don't think they do. I still don't think they do. Well, yeah. For Hurricane Gaming, they have to win early. This is not a late game composition. This comp does nothing like it. So sure. <laughs> you have to keep ahead of the curve. A lot of your targets get one cap by Zed. Uh, so you, you also have to play a relatively clean game where you can't kill give kills over to Kirino, where you will make your life just a nightmare. So the windows that they have and the amount of uh, cleanliness that they have to play with, I think is very limiting. Um, on the side for Sem9, they honestly have a lot more Wait. outs here. Goes Dive in. time. Flash away. Uh, there's no matter available. That is clean from Kirino mm. and Philia helping out. There you go. A kill over to Zed, Clement. Yeah, that's what we wanted to see. And if you will pick Zed, I will always root for you. Because I love watching <laughs> Assassins. Yeah, we all grew up on that Faker versus Ryu play. The man that dies a thousand times a day. This is just beautiful to watch, and hopefully they get to spin the strategy into the bottom side. A good little roam up from the support. Uh, Clay X and Felia, you know, still in a decent position in that bottom lane. The Jinx catching the wave, and not much Ali Al can do, so Gold League continues to be in Sem 9's favor as we look at the replay from this Manalus dive from Chuck Chuck. And just beautifully done. He flashes the E, but it doesn't really work out for him, and Felia does take the two parting shots, so there's Absolutely no loss here, and you know this is a massive power spike coming in from the side of Zed. I really am curious on what item he is going to go first with. Uh, we have seen things like the Prowlers. Yep. Um, it is potentially dust play, though. I, I think Prowlers overall probably has more potential for outplay, um, yep. given the amount of like skill shots here that we're seeing. If it was uh, an SOFM jungle Zed, it would be Umbral Glaive first. Mm. As you know, but again, it's not, so we'll <laughs> wait and see. Uh, a very, very good item in pro play, and, and something that is so painful to verse. Yeah. Uh, especially in the early game, as, as it is a relatively cheap item, but Clement, it's Herald time. Ignore what I'm saying, because we have a strong Zed, and for now, I'm kind of curious as to how you set yourself up on, on this objective. 
I think we're looking at the potential for Wombo combo here. So Hurricane Gaming, the most important thing for them is to not bunch up when you're going down the ramp. That is yep. the cardinal sin that you can make here. I love 7-9's positioning. They have this ward cleared out. They're already close to the ramp. So if Hurricane Gaming and their backline show up, it's a very easy engage for Felia. Karino is getting some poke down. And they are also just waiting for the Jinx to come up. Here we go. Really, it flashes in. The rest of his team not there yet, Ooh. though. And for Sam Knight, their support maybe not uh, not communicating that well. Cathbiel going to be caught out next, and that's two kills. Clay X wasn't there, and Shiramine was far away too. Like I'm not sure about that one. I think he tunneled just a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> He heard my voice through the ether, you know? He's like, oh, yeah. we have to we have to take them down. Brother, they're coming up the ramp. That's your best opportunity. So he heard my voice. He went straight in. And then Clay X and everyone else on Sun 9 said, no. As, ooh, that was close. An attempt, a worthy attempt mm -hmm. at the very least. Herald goes down. Hurricane Gaming, even out in gold, Clement. Um, and the comp that you talked about, you know, that, that doesn't really synergize together. They are now back into the early game that was going swimmingly for Sem9. Yeah. Uh, weirder things have happened, I guess. That's true. Uh, take a look across the map. Uh, Clay X, I think he does get one turret plating in the bottom side. A bit of a consolation prize. Um, and for all y'all right now, I, I would actually want to drop this into the uh, the mid lane. I don't feel like dropping it, even if they take the top lane, it doesn't really change much of the map equation. I would mm -hmm. much prefer to just get Cha-Cha even further ahead, make sure he's not a viable solo kill target uh, from the side of Carino, and, uh, you know, just make sure that that Zed doesn't have that many opportunities to roam here. Because again, he picked up the kill, still without the mythic, but... Uh, keeping Kirino down is you know, a very viable solution here for Hurricane Gaming and it feels like something that they need to do anyway. So as they start leading ahead in gold, we'll watch that Herald placement. But here in the early game, four kills in 10 minutes. Uh, hoping things continue to heat up because we are moving closer and closer outside the laning phase. And when both teams need wins to kind of survive, like the fact that this early game has been a bit questionable in certain mm -hmm. stances, is kind of setting up where they are in the league. You got 10 teams, and the ninth and 10th place are very veered off from everyone else. Yeah, we had some basically love shown both ways from the supports this game. Yeah, uh, Completely got a head-scratcher uh, games, but here is really the time where I think things can get much more interesting. We do have the combos online on the side for 7-9. And a Leona is a great one to start the combo with. So I like that they're basically baiting with the Dragon here, forcing again Hurricane Gaming to come down to those ramps where you typically are very grouped up and Caspio can find a good gauge. But Hurricane Gaming, they just don't fight. They know that they have no business going into this river given the vision disadvantage. Just pass by. And it's only a Cloud Soul that you, you could potentially be giving away this game. So mm -hmm. the, the least concern out of any of the souls coming through. But there's two Dragons. It's still a condition for Sem 9. Still something they've been stacking up. And as that goes down, uh, now we're back to the Herald play. So Alial moving towards mid, but no camps seem to be available. A position on the entrance on this left side. And somewhere to get the Herald down, but he's going back towards top, Clement. I feel like he's going to double down on this. Yeah, that's the only lane they have the uh, wave pushing in, but he is spotted here, and Zed is also moving up here. That's why I wanted it to go mid. If you go mid, Zed can't show up and surprise you. Uh, Alia, where lane. are you going, Alia? Okay. Where are you going? Well, he's going into the nether. Deathmark used. Kirino <laughs> picks up a kill. Herald is going to help get this turret, that's for sure. Shiromane can't stop that as the minions will help do the work. ICU prioritized, but yeah, Alia is just going to trade up his life for it, I guess. And I just don't feel like Sem9 are really threatened about losing their top lane tower. Um, you know, it's yeah. a kill over to Zed. <laughs> and what, what is Nari going to do, honestly? Yeah. Like, I don't think I've ever seen anyone afraid about Nar roaming, and that, that's why I would have much preferred to see it go mid instead. I mean, when you're dropping it mid, at the very least, you know that Zed's not going to surprise you. And you kind of limit his effectiveness. Oh. Oh, <laughs> Good no. play. Yeah, nice. No, cancels the back yeah. and just saw it with the edge of vision. Uh, unfortunate to say the least, and you're right. You know, mid to give Cha-Cha a, a bit of an edge, because Kirino now, 
has a prowler's claw. You get your question to the answer to the question, I should say, Clement. Mm. Uh, we do have a Zed with a lot more outplay potential, a lot more gap close than he already has. Yeah, and this is really going to help out when he gets pushed by, by back by the Scatter of the Weak and instantly yeah. just pop the prowlers and get right back on its target or have the uh, W ready for the engage as well. So this is a huge power spike coming in. You have double mythics coming out on the side of Sem9 carries before anything from Hurricane Gaming. And we still haven't seen a move volley just yet. So I, I do expect things to really start to heat up quite soon. Uh, Shiromine has also completed his mythic in the Everfrost. So a lot of catch potential here. And I, I just feel like Sem9, their strategy to win the game is very clear going forward. Is you just try to take every objective fight you can from now on. You're almost guaranteed to win. In most instances, if the enemy can't find any poke on you, you just snowball the game from there. Yeah, easy, easy way through. Hurricane Gaming, limited options in the early game already being shown where gold may have flipped in their favor, but we see plays like that. We see the item advantage, and we know that Dragon's coming up in two minutes, another Herald in a minute. A lot of options available for the comp that looks a little bit stronger, and Caspiel's coming to the bottom lane. This will not be spotted. Hurricane Gaming have their own, but as Felia clears out the ward, there's another one in there. Caspiel's going to walk into it, and there goes the element of surprise. Mm -hmm. Just a straight 3v3 here. They wanted to catch Hurricane Gaming in the middle of the lane, but Hurricane Gaming did a very good job at covering all of their entrances and making sure the lane gank wasn't available. I really like that they also had all y'all here into the bottom side just to make sure that doesn't happen. And in the meantime, ICU is doing his darnest. <laughs> to, to get as far ahead as possible yeah. in this game. I just, I feel bad about this Narpig because even if it wins lane this hard and like taking away enemy caps, I just don't think it's going to show up in skirmishes at all. I, I yeah. Like the skirmishes are going to happen so quickly from the side of Sem9 and they're not going to, they're not going to pay any attention to the Megan Arbara. It's almost like it doesn't exist. And here we That's have true. the dive. In and out before anything happened before you can get the Mega Nara ulti off. It's a Mega Death Rocket going up. I think that is checking the Herald as, no, they got false uh, false information. It started now while the turret goes down to the bottom side. So, 7-9 equalizing a little bit in gold once again. Herald's going to be started here. We are just doing a simple dance with pants, Clement. Uh, what item comes next for Kirino? Let's, let's, let's talk about that because as a Zed, you have so many options, like so many lethality items to choose from. Yeah, there's a whole host of them right now. Uh, there's no shielding that much on the enemy team, so you don't really expect the Serpent's Fang. We have seen yep. people just go straight up for the um, Sorelia's Grudge, which is oh, yeah. one of the items that are kind of interesting. But I think in this sense, he's probably going for Knight's Edge, given his item build and the Ruby right now. Um, most likely just thinking about countering out the uh, Scatter of the Weak. It makes it very hard for Syndra to get away. I expect probably that item uh, into Sorelia okay. third makes a little bit more sense. I love Knight's Edge sounds better. I think it's Edge of Night. But oh, I like Edge Knight's of Night. Edge. Sorry. Knight's <laughs> Edge is cooler, dude. Uh, it's literally like, let's give it to one of the best mid laners in the world. Let's mm. name, name an item after him. And how not starting anything here. Uh, but Dragon's up. And Clement, Knight's Edge won't be there. But Kirino still has a lot of damage. And Sem9 are gearing up. Look at where the Zed is. And look at where Hurricane Gaming up to walk into. Oh no. Oh no. They've walked into this. Wait for the Diana ulti. <laughs> I am. Caspiel's still there. Kirino jumps on in. Ignites oh. down. There's a two-man moonfall. And Bang 2 cops the edge of it. But still no kill. And ICU, who wouldn't have an angle, now aims for the AD carry. Play X has the range to play with. Everyone's so low. And Kirino finally finishes off the kill with the... Prowler's Claw, but look at this! Hurricane Gaming, get out with lives that shouldn't be there. I'm so surprised at Sem9. Once again, they do sort of fumble the engage. Hurricane Gaming honestly gave them a perfect chance. They got the full surround. They had yeah. Nar still very far back into the background, but Cilia just went in a little bit too early. I love Again. the play from Enhau, being able to use that death charge to slow the rest of the team, and they just don't get the combo. The combo should be Leona ultimate into Diana Moonfall, and then you have Zed picking up targets left and right. Zed went in when I guess he realized, like, I gotta go in, I gotta go in now. Like, Kirino wasn't able to clean up, did a lot of damage, but it wasn't enough here, and so Hurricane Gaming, with a couple of quick resets and members left over, 
will pick up the dragon, slow down that objective momentum. And Clement, as we look at the replay here, you're right, Felia starts this off again before the team's there. Yeah, just look at how many seconds it takes before the Moonfall comes after the Leona ultimate. A couple key things right here, they didn't really have vision of the banana brush, always a key thing when you're playing red side versus blue side. And we saw Moonfall coming in about five or six seconds later. Kirino is just making his way in to the fight right now. He picks off the jungler. It's three and zero, but I, I can't help but feel like they could have played that with a little bit more patience. And just like if Filio has waited two seconds, just just two seconds uh, for the, the back end, I, I think for uh, Kirino to, to go in, it would have been fine. Hello, Shiramine caught out a little bit here, and they do have the damage. Nicely done, I guess. When ICU has all the resources, he is still going to do a bit of damage. He's doing a great job at this point. And uh, this is a split push threat that Sem9 do have to reckon with. They've been trying to group up so far. Now getting caught out again. Felia frontlining. Soul Flare comes through. Caspiel not in yet. Use the Proto Belt. Once only Move one. Up. That's on the bank too, but the Gale Force away. Meanwhile, Kirino has a death mark onto ICU. It's a double kill. For Clay X's, Aliao hovers back. Philia golden for the last shot. He survives, and Seb9 punish Hurricane going way too deep. Yeah, that was a bit weird from Hurricane Gaming. Cha Cha was not in position, so they willingly walked themselves and actually engaged onto a, uh, a sort of a 4v5 situation. Uh, sure, Shiromine wasn't there either, but they already expended their alts from the previous fight, so it definitely was not in their favor. Just going a little bit too deep. Uh, if they just waited again for uh, people to link up, this would have been a much stronger position. So we're going to watch that again. You know, engaging in these sort of narrow corridors, it's definitely favorable for the side that is going in tank first. And how at this point, you know, not as tanky as a Leona with the W, and they're able to just kind of front to back this and clean up target after target. I want to see how many kills uh, Kirino has after this because... He is going on very close to legendary at this point. Oh, you didn't get anything. Okay, never mind. Oh, no. Oh, man. Uh, look, Clement, Kirino is... It, it's funny for a 3-0 Zed. Like, mm. I'm sure we're going to see him pop off more in the next couple of fights, but he's being very calm, kind of playing around what Feely is doing at the moment. And my point comes to this. We have a very strong Sem 9, and I need to come back to a, a point like... This Zed has so many targets. You talked about it. And even as the game goes on, a lot of people think Zed going to fall off. But with the amount of targets you told me about, it's pretty easy to see how he can rip through all game long. Yeah, I expect like Aliol to just completely die. And ICU waits for his Here Mega to go down. Oh, sure, it can miss. Ignites there, and he jumps back. Caspiel, you want to finish it? It's yours. It's all yours. Uh, beautiful punish right there. Nobody expects the Zed to come from behind. That's always the most difficult angle. Like, yeah. if you look at the warding from ICU, he's like, okay, I, I did my due diligence. I made sure that uh, there's nobody on my flank. And then Zed just pops up right behind you. The timing was perfect there from uh, uh, from Carino as well. And Hurricane and Gaming don't really have a lot of wave clear to keep this one alive. Uh, we have the collateral damage being expended. Yeah, and another ulti with Kurt Call as well. Sure, Mane just blocking it all. And Bang2 accepts fate that all bullets are going to go into him. So mid turret defender for now. But again, it's ultimate for ultimate for ultimate used. Uh, and for Sem9, they've got another wave that's going to be coming in. They'll be consistent or persistent, I should say. And Clement, I guess we're going to keep assaulting mid until we get to the next dragon in 50 seconds. And at that point, Edge of Night is now complete for Kirino. He'll have that two items. We also have an LDR for Clayx that's been completed a little while ago. Wow, that's a very early LDR against a team that's going full early game. So, interesting yep. choices right here. I just feel like uh, the read from Sem9 is most likely uh, Cha-Cha and Alia will be stacking a lot of armor. So, you might as well get this uh, item done uh, sure. much sooner than usual. Um, I, I can understand that logic coming from the side of Play X. And I think the most important thing we have to note here is... How will Sem9 actually approach this team fight? They do need to, I think, bait Hurricane Gaming a little bit more far forward, or Shuromai needs to have a massive explosive cask. In the previous Whoa. game, he wasn't really there at the start of the fight. This time he is now. And I see you, I have to say, I see you has been really good with his Nar bar so far. Both Drake fights yeah. coming in with about 90% Nar bar. 
and just threatening holding on to it. Uh, I think for Sem9 as well, Clement, they need to keep doing their due diligence in dewarding mm. because these wards were doing quite a lot here as Hurricane Gaming got the first off the edge of night as well. Mega Death Rocket was aimed for Al Leal, but it hits ICU. And as Dragon spawns, Sem9 still with priority over the Ripper, but Hurricane Gaming looked to trade this off through mid. However, it's too short range. They can't walk towards it. The flash in. What? Wait, what? What? Kirino flashes into CC. ICU now dealing with Caspiel. Play X will get the kill and the reset, but Bank 2 and Cha Cha are healthy enough. Caspiel's ulti not doing enough. And over the wall, he comes back in for a quick trade off. Messi is anything. Clay X flashes outside, but Bank 2 wants to deal with him. The cleanse out early. ICU still alive. Clement, it's a fiesta. <laughs> I apparently don't understand how Zed is played. Zed is, I think, a tank now. Maybe, maybe that's kind of the idea. We saw Carino flash in, gets insta stun, and he didn't even get the ultimate off. Just, just died like that. So, interesting play. Like, I, I, I just, I'm just wondering about the communication in that sequence because if you're gonna flash in engage, why isn't it Shiromine doing the flash engage? It feels so weird for the Zed to go in like that. I guess he thinks he's going to be an ulti straight away, but uh, I'll also give credit to N. Howe. That dredge line, that was a good reaction. Mm. That was definitely beautiful there, and a lot of things just going around uh, wrong for Sem9 there. They don't get the knockback on the explosive cast. Clay X, even though he trades this one, you know, they still fall down to, to Bang 2 in the end. And it just seems like a lapse of communication. Uh, there was no way that it would should be Shiromine to go in first. They had so many options. Like, Philia even had his flash in that fight as well. So, yeah. I, I just think it's a comms issue. Like, maybe they wanted to count to three, and then Kirino went in on two. Like, that's, <laughs> that's probably my only explanation. <laughs> Clement, they know what the number three is, though. Come on. Like, <laughs> we, we go in on three. And Kirino's like, okay, I'll, I'll go in on two. No, <laughs> on three. <laughs> Kirino still goes in on two. Uh, his, knights, his edge of night, excuse me, was actually down as well. So yeah. we, we saw it with Scatter the League. So a bit of a blunder. And, and if you're talking about communication issues, this whole game, it is fair to say that, you know, Feely has been on a different page. Like we haven't seen the perfect layering of Caspiel's ult uh, after Felia's two. So, Hurricane Gaming, with some of the individual skill that we've talked about throughout the weeks, taking advantage of, of Sem9, mis-executing, and even in the side lane, start to bridge the gold gap a little bit more. ICU having a great time here with the 20 CS lead, and with this uh, little hole breaker, making sure Amina really worked for it. I really like his build. He's delaying the Mythic a long time just to make maximum use of side, side lane split pushing items. A lot yep. of DPS here. If we catch up. Gotcha. Gonna go golden. The ult use from Kirino as well. But there should be enough burst damage and the ignite ticks him down. There's another kill. Sem9 back on the board, but the solar flare flashed away from Faali. They want Clay X and with a death charge, he'll be rooted down. No reset for him as Felia dies too. Sem9 even committed the teleport. ICU used one too. He'll slow them all down as the curtain call the next to the finishing touches. Flash forward from the top laner. Hurricane Gaming are getting it all. And just when it looks good for Sem9. They came here to play, that's for sure. That was a great response to the top lane. Double ultimates used there. There was actually very low combat power on the side of Caspiel and Carino after that one. So Hurricane Gaming, they see the 3v3, they take it, they go all in with the TPs preemptively, and they clean up the mess. That was just uh, really well done, and I think they understood the tempo uh, extremely well. Unfortunately for Sem9, I'm not sure why their AD carry had to stay around this area. Oh, it was actually Sem9 engaging. Huh. That's, a, that's an interesting choice. <laughs> I, I was thinking that, you know, that you probably don't want to engage on this spot because you're, you're mid-jungle, have no alt, and you, you don't know where they're... Well, okay, they, they went in. I guess that's, <laughs> that's the end of it. <laughs> that's it. They went in, and it cost them everything. Uh, Clement, I don't know. I don't know what to say, man. This game delivering in a very, very unique way. After we've just cast like PSG Talon uh, versus uh, a, a CDBC Flying Oyster, and then versing even Frank Esports, watching Hurricane and Sem9 go at it is a very different experience. It's interesting to say the very least. Yeah. It's definitely interesting. 
I still don't know what Sem9 are doing with their engages. It's just been all over the place so far. And I, I just feel like Hurricane Gaby got out of a bind without really doing much. Like, if you think about this game, it was looking pretty damn bad for Hurricane Gaby. I was like, oh, wait a minute, this Zed is already 3-0. He's moving across the map, completely unimpeded. He's picking up kills left and right. And then Sem9 just somehow fumbled all of the objective fights completely. Yep. Oh yeah. Well, good thing Ali I'll step back. Dragon Soul to die. Uh, and with the fumbling, now we see this 6k gold lead that's built up from all the times it's happened. So Hurricane Gaming in control of this game. Sem9, it was looking like we could start talking about the potential of the first win. Now I'm very concerned that they are going to be 0 and 11 very shortly. I do have an opportunity this time around. Nar isn't here. Plus the cast good, and how the target. Kirino exhausted though, Caspiel! Finally, that's a good ulti. Kirino cleaned up the back line, but stopwatch after stopwatch as Caspiel rooted up, and down he goes. Sem9 without their leader as Shuramene targeted on the back. Clement, again, it looks so good, but Sem9, too far forward, split up without direction. Hurricane Gaming and a blast them away. Oh, that was very unfortunate for Hurricane Gaming. They still had two stopwatches just lying there waiting to be used. And that was a, a good move by Enhow. They're getting his Titan's Wrath just in time. So that's a problem about Zed. You really have very short windows. I feel like Zed, you have to snowball before those stopwatches come online. We didn't really see that happen. Hurricane Gaming picking up team fight win after team fight win. And they're going to cruise with 2-0 in this matchup. They are indeed. Look at Kirino in his first game of the PCS trying trying to keep this going, but Clayx, even if he flashes away, maybe actually, Clement, uh, uh, it's not over yet, Clayx, well not at all, <laughs> and Nexus exposed to the game goes off. Wait a minute, did I misspeak? Are, are we going to get 20 more minutes of game time? We are, yeah, we're going to get at least, well, at least 10, at least 10. Clayx just stepping up huge to the play, getting excited and just picking away at his targets from the bottom side. He manages to clean everything up, and I, I thought this game was over for sure. I, I no. thought it was just done. But Hurricane Gaming, I, I actually feel like Hurricane Gaming probably split focus in that one. You know, they were trying to deal with multiple members. They, they weren't all on the Nexus for that moment, and we are seeing the objective bounties just rolling in. Yeah, and look, it's only mid inhibitor that's gone down, so... S9 and making sure the wave's nowhere near the base. There was no ward placed. However, there is a Jin trap. I think that's a Jin trap on the left hand side. We'll have to see what happens here because you're right, Hurricane Gaming. Uh, they went in for the play, and I think Kirino and Clay X getting their Ooh. time to play. Yeah, I see you goes a little bit too far in. Dies first. Great play from Clay X. Keeps his distance so well and kites out with a thousand gold bounty. That was such a beautiful move to see him heal and then flash away, but still use his auto attack range to get the last hit in. That was, you know, that was really uh, intimate uh, knowledge of his distancing in that yep. team fight display right there. Great stuff from him, and look at his items right now. He's actually ahead of Bang 2, who's 6, 1, and 8. <laughs> and you did talk about this cop being a better scaler. So that is worth mentioning where Hurricane Gaming, limited options in this game. Yes, they still have the gold lead. Yes, they have an open Nexus. But Sem9, if they can delay this, if they can keep the game going, remember that once that inhibitor is up, they're going to be able to push out on the map a lot more. They're even doing it now, but hang on. They might have to deal with ICU. Be careful. Mm. ICU's mid. They can't go too far. There are no Nexus Towers left, so one member can just finish the game. They have to go back and defend. Uh, it was a good idea for Philia to try to come in from the side, but unfortunately he was actually slowed down by the Jin traps. He had the Elixir of Iron running as well. He's not able to find that uh, engage onto Bang 2. Uh, the most important thing here is I think I think we have to see a good explosive cast from Shiro Mine. Yep. Uh, there's been so many team fights, but unfortunately, Gragas has been missing the mark just a little bit. He needs to get the knockback or the scatter effect. That's when you have a lot of just uh, isolated 1v1s where Kirino can really pilot this Zed to perfection. Okay, so explosive cask, uh, I think as well, we've already said Caspiel's ulti mm. has to be layered after the solar flare. Uh, it has to come together perfectly because one step, one misstep, even like like macro-wise, right? Sem9 are coming so far out on the map. Look at Bot. Shiromini has to go back there, but 
Right now, I see you having a great time in the solo lane. And for a team that has no Nexus turrets, they are very far out right now. Yeah, the damage that ICU doing is getting pretty far out of hand. He can just, he's going to take this he's one down. He's doing it. He's about to go Meganar. Now, he's going to commit for this. Explosive cast there. Meganar ult the back. Ooh. That's like the backwards done. And look, they picked off what? Kirino. So, Sem9 are now down a member, and that should just be a Baron. Or at least walk it in. One of them. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised by Kirino's death right there. He was the one waiting inside the brush, but maybe bit off a little bit more than he could chew. And this is Hurricane Gaming putting the finishing touches. They could just end the game on this push. Well, they're going to slow down the jungler, and look at the damage here from Ali Al. Teleport coming through. Hurricane want to end it, and Caspiel just gets one shot. The old D <laughs> doesn't come down. Two members, Clement. Long death timers. Hurricane Gaming are back to set out what they tried to do before. That was an interesting turn of events. I, I expected <laughs> one big fight. This is one big fight. Oh, no room seven, nine, Here we go. You're a minute. And that one doesn't do too much. Unfortunately, Clement, you don't get your wish. Aliar does way too much damage. And Sem9, it doesn't matter because at the end they got picked apart in different parts. And Hurricane Gaming are going to make sure they don't pick up their first win instead. Hurricane get a little bit closer towards that middle of the pack. I feel That's like a kid game. after a, a GameStop Christmas sale where you know there's so many like triple A game titles on on sale right now and then your grandma b brings you the one game that's like has a negative review um, oh no it's like the one that the only one you didn't want to play and it's just like yeah what? like a golfing you know there's like there's like a new tekken out yeah there's like a, a super like any console right there's uh, there's like and the, the csgo game coming out on the first xbox and you get like you get uh, uh who's the famous golfer Who's the famous golfer, Clement? Tiger Woods. You get the Tiger Woods golfing game. <laughs> that's what you, that's what she got you. And you have to put on a smile and say thanks. But you're really never gonna play it. There were so many good options, so many potential highlights from Sem 9s composition, and the start wasn't even that bad, but I just I just feel robbed of like entertainment. Because I you do had too. two very weird and untimely deaths coming in from Carino and just not being able to chain any of the engages together it's just uh clement you know not robbed of entertainment but to be fair it was obvious from the early game how this was going to set out because mm. in the early game it was the greedy pathing from anhal and uh and to be fair bang two from the invade where at level one they just walked like they <laughs> i don't know <laughs> I have to say, like, Hurricane Gaming has had some of the most tragic level ones that we've seen throughout this split. Yeah. And, like, in their past three games. I'm just talking about their past three games. They had, they had a game where... <laughs> they had a game where uh, Aliel had to go back to base before finishing his blue. The blue buff actually beat him level one. And then yeah. we had another game where they walked into a completely calamitous level one. They spotted a ward and still went in for the late level one invade got completely wiped, oh, yeah. and then we have this game where Enhau just, you know, just dies. Was it, really. was it Aoliao who forgot to buy items? Was that the one in the last No, 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 that game? was actually Hana. Hana forgot to buy Hana. items, but Aoliao did the SOFM, and the Krugs actually beat him back. So, That's right. <laughs> uh, not the Krugs, the Krump actually beat him back. So, yeah. I, I just, it's, it's so weird, because I honestly don't think that Hurricane Gaby are even that bad of a team, no. but it's just that they have these super tragic level ones. Or honestly, it, and they're self-inflicted too. They are. Yeah. They are like the, the bottom line, and that's why we thought our oh, Sem Nine in great position. You know, better comp overall. Let's be real. Um, you talked about how Hurricane Gaming's comp functions. It didn't make that much sense to you, and it's they still made it work anyway. And they played towards ICU. They played towards their top laner on a champion that didn't really need the lane attention as he was just coasting along. Yeah, credit where it's credit credit is due. ICU played a very good game of NAR. He yeah. had lane control the entire way through. Even before the Herald, he was already up by three plates. So that just goes to show you his sort of domination against Shiromine, and especially in this matchup. Um, but I, I still had a lot of questions. I, I felt like this comp wasn't a 4-1 comp whatsoever. And you could see yeah. that this team 
does not fold into the uh, the, the split pushing side. It's a, it's a very clunky team. It's more like an artillery piece when you're moving across the like the Jin and Syndra uh, across the map. So I, I had a lot of my doubts there, but I, I think they were alleviated by the fact that ICU was so good at controlling his Meganar Rage. Every single Drake team fight, he's coming in with 80, 95% Meganar Rage, which I think made the comp somewhat more playable. Well, ain't that a goal, Graf, though, as we round it up. Um, yeah, you know, again, ICU, you know, ma makes that whole draft uh, quite fluid when, I think for Sem 9, we saw engages time differently. Like, Felia wasn't on the same page. Piece by piece, Sem 9 were going in, and then ICU has a target all of a sudden for an ulti because they're running away. So I, I like that game in certain parts, Clement, but I won't be racing back to uh, mm. watch this one again because I think Hurricane Gaming and Sem 9 are kind of cementing that, like, and this is this, I, I'm a guest here, right? Hurricane Gaming are now 2 and 9. They have a chance of catching up to Meta Falcon Team, Impunity, True. or even Frank Esports, but Sem 9 kind of cementing the fact that. Uh, they're probably going to be the first team out of a potential playoffs as we look at the MVP. Now, ICU deserves it. And once again, this is normally the player we can get gaming, so it makes sense. Deals the most damage on his team overall. And uh, this is, I think, a, a good showcase of what he will be able to do against a lot of the more weak side top laners that we have in the lead. I could see ICU making a decisive play against hurt against taco we do have a lot of top laners that are just more defensive in nature or their team does not prioritize their own lane and i feel like hurricane gaming actually has a chance to to prey on those teams and get themselves a surprise playoff spot in my estimation it's still a, a long shot even against sem 9 they did not have a good early game no nope. as we saw in the girl graph and they will still be solidly last in terms of their early game performance but hey if they could clear clean up their level ones Please just clean up their level ones. <laughs> I feel like they have a good chance. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, uh, giving an advantage, it doesn't need to be given. 11 lost streak, of course, for Sem9. Uh, Hurricane Gaming getting their second win, both against Sem9, by the way, for these teams. Uh, it's been a pretty hard run, but hopefully it improves from here. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking of improving, it's Impunity versus MFT. Coming up right after this.